Yo, what is going on, Comfy Gang? It's your boy, Comfy Neat. And um, if you're wondering why I'm lying down right now, it's because I wanted to get real comfy for this video topic, which I want to talk about. And that is the average, or I guess the typical neat sleep schedule. So I think sleep schedules are, I guess, pretty typical among most neats. And I feel like they evolve over certain stages or maybe they don't and maybe I'm just speaking for myself. But um, yeah, at least for me, um, or at least I feel like, you know, maybe certain sleep patterns can indicate that one might be a risk for becoming neat. And one of them is that you are a night owl. And I feel like typically if you maybe let's say sleep let's say from like 8 to 12 p.m and wake up at like 6 to 8 a.m i'd say that's like the typical normal sleep schedule for like the average working person for the average student for the average person who is able to fit into society but then there are people who i guess are naturally born night owls or something or Whatever the reason is, I feel like it's definitely some sort of like indicator that they are predisposed be to becoming neat because, you know, some people say that, you know, sleeping at late hours and waking late is some a sign of intelligence. Maybe intelligent people are more likely to become neat because, you know, they're more likely to have Asperger's or, you know, obviously that's just a huge cope. Like, I don't know. It's that, that's definitely not it, but I feel like it definitely is indicative of some sort of yeah predisposition. So anyways, I'm going to speak for, my, for, for myself from now on. So um, yeah, I'd say around college, especially after I yeah went to university, like um, I guess all that freedom kind of allowed me to, to fall into my natural sleep pattern, if you will. And that initially was probably around 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., even 4 a.m., and then waking up at around, you know, maybe 10 to 12 p.m., usually, like, pretty late, like 12 p.m., and then sometimes, yeah, so I, that was my typical sleep schedule for a long time when I was still considered a normal functioning person in society, but you know, not no longer being controlled by my parents and having my sleep schedule sort of like warped, I guess, to their will. So that would, I guess you could say it was like my authentic sleep schedule, if that makes sense. And yeah, I would sleep like this. But ever since becoming neat, um, well, I initially stuck to that sleep schedule fairly consistently, maybe for like a few months. But, you know, Eventually, it would start to get later and later, uh, like maybe from like three on three a.m. on average, to maybe like four or five a.m. on average, and then waking up later and later, and then eventually I would start going to bed at like six a.m., seven a.m. No, I'd say around six a.m., and then um, yeah, after that, like I would be sleeping pretty regularly for maybe let's say maybe like. Uh, a week every day at like 6 a.m. and waking up at like 2 in the afternoon 3 in the afternoon and um, you know this would happen and eventually I'd try and reset my sleep schedule so I'd try and uh, pull all-nighters and like try and fall fall asleep at like 9 p.m. you know like try and stay awake and this worked for a while especially while I was a younger neat but um, eventually uh, it became harder and harder to stay awake and I would eventually, you know, fall asleep at or maybe like one or two in the afternoon and wake up at maybe four or five. And then I would try and, uh, you know, and then I'd be like, oh, shit, I try to go to bed early, you know, sometimes with the help of sleeping pills and, you know, at initially like sleeping pills because, you know, uh, I had access to them because uh, 
my dad was a physician, practicing physician. So we had like a stockpile of, uh, you know, sleeping pills, but that's beside the point. Like I had sleeping pills and they would work initially. Like I would take them once and, um, I'd fall asleep at like 9 PM. I'd wake up at maybe, you know, 6 AM, you know, cause I was so fatigued from the previous night of pulling an all nighter. So that would kind of work for a little bit, but then, you know, eventually I would, you know, sleep at a healthy time for maybe like a week or two. And then it would slowly, slowly start to, you know, push later and later, especially since at the time I was still playing a lot of online games with friends like League of Legends. And, you know, they were in the West Coast and, um, fuck, I'm going to dox myself. Um, let's just say I was, you know, quite farther ahead in the time zone from them. So, you know, like late at a good time to game for them was like already pretty late and then we would game for like three to four hours so eventually my sleep schedule would naturally get pushed uh, to 3 a.m but even when i eventually lost contact with them um like like because this is kind of the kind of stuff i would do like while some university as well but even when i lost contact it was just like i would naturally um be drawn or like just drift towards these later sleeping times and eventually the cycle would repeat itself over and over again and i would you know accept i would continue to sleep even later and later and um so let's say maybe around 6 7 a.m 8 a.m and wake up at like 3 4 5 p.m and and i'm trying to reset my sleep schedule again but then it would be less and less effective and i would um you know i would fall back into my old and healthy sleeping patterns even faster and faster and um eventually at some point you know in the last like year i'd say of you know during my need them i'd say i you know across some you know critical threshold of messing up your sleep patterns where you know eventually you know I don't know, I guess time, I feel like it's at this point in time where time started to lose all meaning for me as a neat, or like the days would start to like blend to each other and the weeks and everything, whatever, weeks and months, whatever, would like fly by. And that's because I would just basically uh, start to sleep whenever. So my sleep schedule would sort of like, um, like shift where, um, it's like it would shift two out one to two hours every two or three weeks so let's say i'd sleep from like 2 2 a.m to 10 a.m for like three weeks and then it would be 3 a.m to 11 a.m and then 4 a.m to 12 p.m and then and it would kind of like cycle around the clock where it would get to points where I was like sleeping at um, maybe like 10 a.m. and waking up at like 5 p.m., 12, 12 uh, p.m. and waking up at 8 p.m. And then it would kind of cycle and then I would get to like a healthy sleeping time. And during these healthy sleeping times, healthy sleeping times, I would actually feel a lot better, a lot healthy, a lot more energized, but it would just feel like this endless cycle. And eventually because of my insomnia and stuff, cause you know, during the, I, I wouldn't always sleep like eight hours. Like sometimes it would be like, uh, maybe like three or four hours, five hours, depending on how bad my insomnia was, whether I was exercising or not. Because like while I was at the gym, I feel like I would sleep at least two, one to two hours more than usual. And then you know, if I was like mentally stimulated or like mentally like, you know, I guess doing something cognitively challenging, like, I don't know, reading or like playing games or working on music, then I'd sleep better too. But eventually it got to the point where like, I feel like my insomnia just kind of like, is more related to like my mood swings, if, if anything, like my, like my minor, I'm not going to say bipolar, I'm just going to say like, 
you know, like mood swings within like what's, I guess, considered normal where like, you know, sometimes you're down, sometimes you feel more like excited than usual. And yeah, so like when I was like in these excited periods, I would sleep a lot less, but I don't know. Is it that I'm excited or is it something else? But it could be all in my head, but um, yeah, so eventually got to the point where like I would sleep four hours and you know typically I would try and stay awake until like my previous sleeping time but eventually um it got to the point where I would just you know say f it I would start to feel tired during the afternoon and you know especially after eating get that like post prandial whatever it's called that that glucose that glucose, um, you know, spike in that energy dip. And I would just, at some point in time, I just stopped. I would, you know, I, at one point I fell asleep once and then, you know, it made it more likely for me to fall asleep again during that time. And, you know, eventually it got to the point where I would basically just sleep whenever I felt sleepy, even if it was after eating. And, you know, that's where we are now. And, I would say that's the evolution of my personal need schedule, but I would guess that it's pretty similar for most needs or especially most mid-stage, late-stage needs. Um, I don't want to know if it gets any worse than that. Hopefully it doesn't devolve even further where I'm like sleeping every three hours and waking like within like an hour of sleeping, some weird crap like that. Right now, I sleep anywhere from one to two times per day, depending on my mood. If I like get a good eight hours of sleep, then I usually stay awake until the next sleep time. But sometimes when I have like insomnia, I sleep like three, four hours, five hours, and then I compensate for the lack of sleep instead of staying awake and like by sleeping during the afternoon or something. And honestly, I feel a lot better doing that. Maybe it's better just to follow, you know, your, your body's natural sleep rhythms because I do feel a lot more rested. Who knows, maybe I'm the enlightened one. Maybe I'm the one with the actual proper sleep schedule, but who really knows? It At times certainly doesn't feel healthy. It doesn't feel healthy when you wake up especially during the later hours like you kind of feel like a doomer you kind of feel like you're rotting especially when you wake up at like 5 p.m and it's 6 p.m and it's already like dark outside and you have to like turn on the lights because there's no more natural light or you f or you uh see that like that like dusk like the light from like dusk you know pouring through the wind just like a, a hint of light but it's already like pretty much dark and and yeah it's it's pretty bad when it's you wake up and it's like pitch black and you have to turn on the light like hit the light switch or it's like yeah there's a little bit of light coming from like lighting up your room from outside like from the hallway and yeah it's pretty crappy but that is, I'd say, the evolution of the need sleep schedule. And at least as far as it goes for me, but I'm pretty sure a lot of needs can relate to this. So it's probably accurate for a lot of needs. I'm sure that there's some needs that manage to maintain like a pretty healthy sleep schedule, but I'd say the longer you stay a need, the harder and harder it becomes to, you know, adhere to, you know, the average need schedule, the average sleep schedule, which could be seen as sort of a, maybe a convention, a sort of societal expectation, if you will, meant to fit into the average like nine to five work schedule, but who really knows? Um, but yeah, uh, as far as how that affects me, um, I don't really know. There must be some negative effects, negative effects. And I would say probably when the, the primary causes of me sleeping like this is just the all the blue light from like staring at screens like computer screens like your phone screen playing video games and being mentally stimulated probably makes it hard to sleep at that healthy sleep time so 
obviously my sleep hygiene is pretty poor. I don't do things like drink a glass of milk or like tea or whatever and do stretches and, you know, shut off all electronics before a certain time and like read a book maybe. I should definitely read more because I'm basically illiterate right now. Um, that's besides the point. Um, but yeah, that's these are all things that contribute to me, you know, not being able to sleep at like a set time and have my sleep schedule get pushed further and further just around the clock and just has all sorts of negative effects like me losing my sense of time and you know time accelerating maybe maybe that's because of my sleep schedule or maybe or maybe not but who knows really um anyways that's pretty much all i have to say about about my sleep schedule as a neat uh so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this and this is comfy neat signing out